This is my long awaited workbench build and if you would like to tag along on my journey that would be awesome. I used construction pine for the base frame and hardwood LVLs for the bench tops. All was cut down into manageable lengths with two faces cleaned up and squared at the jointer. The third buzzed through the thicknesser and the final face cleaned up at the table saw. I knew I had an epic glue up coming, so I made sure I had plenty of Cheetos ready. The legs, stretchers and rails were all laminated pine glued and clamped together. And as per usual, you never have enough clamps. When all the base frame components were dry, they all went through the same milling process to ensure all was square, flush and trim. I needed a break from all the gluing. The Cheetos were blocking up my system. So I turned my attention to the base, cutting the legs to length, flushing and squaring with a block plane and chamfering the bottoms. Woodwork is fairly new to me, so if you have any tips or tricks, please chuck them in the comments. Marking out the mortise and tenons with multiple light passes until I had a rather deep gauge line. Setting the depth stop on the drill and clearing out the bulk of the material for the mortise with a force a bit. Working my way out towards the gauge line, I started to remove material. Needing as much help as I could get, I used a couple of guide blocks, placed my chisel in the gauge line and chopped and pared away. The dado stack got thrown in and at the table saw, I cut away at the tenons, just keeping shy of the gauge lines. For the cutout for the front apron, a series of cuts were made. As you can see, this is why I am building a bigger and better workbench. It was most unfortunate that my dado stack didn't have the depth of cut I wanted, so I had to purchase a brand new shiny tenon saw. This part was extremely satisfying for some reason as I then cleaned up the rest with a chisel and a couple of planes. Using a combination of a shoulder plane, rebate block plane and a mill file, I tuned up the tenons until I had the desired fit. I am using hand and power tools as I need to improve my skills on both and consider this all good practice. For the bench top, the hardwood LVLs were laid out and glued up in three small sections so that they could fit through the thicknesser. A simple plastic scraper with notches filed on the edge has become my go-to glue applicator. Sash clamps and calls used to keep the sections flat as possible during glue up. A cool little addition to my toolkit was this chisel plane which has been great at cleaning up the dried up glue. Each section was put through the thicknesser. In an attempt to help line up the top, biscuits were used, as sections were glued and clamped together. While all that was drying, I set up to draw board the mortise and tenon. First, drilling through the mortise, sliding the mating part in, marking with the same brad point moving the drilling point back a few millimetres, then drilling the tenons. The shiny saw came out again to cut up a bunch of dowels. Now it came time for assembly of the base frame. Glue was applied to the mortise and tenons and the rails tapped into place. A sash clamp to pull all together and a bit of glue on the dowels and whacking them down. I am already using my bench top to assemble my base frame. With the aid of some clamps and a block for a stop, the stretches were tapped in, then the sides lined up and knocked into place. All pulled together with clamps, all the dowels driven home making a super strong and secure joint, then flush trimming. Time came to cut my top to length and square up the ends. Power was my first choice 
then the manual labour. I'm starting to enjoy using hand tools. Sitting the base frame onto the bench top, I carefully marked around the tenons. With a drilling guide, with its depth stop set, the bulk of the material was removed. Then the chiselling began. While the bench top was flipped, a trench was put in for the sliding dead man. I wanted to cap the ends, so they got cleaned up and squared, and a couple of slots were put in with the router. The slides got prepared at the table saw, and matching slots put in the end caps. I am hoping to see if this will help reduce any cupping or warping of the bench top. One of the end caps needed to be extended to suit the vise. The vise holes were drilled. A recess was put in to suit the lag bolts. The end cap and the splines were glued up and because it was end grain, lag bolts were put in. Then the ends flushed. The front vise hardware was mounted. However, I wanted my other vise to be flush with the bench top face. A recess was chopped out, the hardware mounted, and then a cover plate made and bolted on, then flushed. I decided to film some horrible footage of me spraying some jam on. I chose to mount these removable casters, which ended up being a good choice. Firstly, I don't think they look that good. Plus, you knock them with your feet as you work around the bench. Being impatient, I went for it and decided to mount my bench top without any help. This is the point of no return and I was getting a bit nervous. Those Cheetos felt like reappearing. I walked the bench top across, had a few whoopsie moments, but eventually all was good. It was a huge relief to get that bench top on and whacking those dowels home was super satisfying. I made those end caps proud so that I could flush them to the bench top. However, the bench top ended up with a dip in the middle. With an aggressive cut, I planed from the middle out, taking lighter cuts diagonally across, then with the grain. Eventually the smoothing plane came out and it ended up with a pretty cool result. This is my first time flattening a bench top, and it wasn't as daunting as I first thought. All the blanks for the apron, dead man, and vice jaws had finished drying. A track saw and a drop saw was used to cut to size. I practiced my planing by putting a heavy chamfer on one of the vice jaws. Everything else I hit with a router. A V-shaped groove was cut into the bottom of the sliding dead man. A bunch of holes drilled to accept some dogs and hold downs and a fancy shaped profile starting at the bandsaw and ending with some rasps. After matching the angle, the V-shaped rail and sliding dead man was installed. I debated with myself whether to put in a rubbish collecting shelf. I lost that debate and put one in, using a simple pine boards with a heap of countersunk holes and screws. After working out where I wanted all my dog holes, I used the drilling guide on the apron and bench top. As soon as I had finished using that crappy spay bit, my new Forstner bit that I ordered came in. The holes all got a slight chamfer. The apron got thrown on and attached with lag bolts. I cut up some simple dogs out of dowel and also got some shiny brass ones. I wanted deep vice jaws, however the dogs I have aren't long enough, so I needed a solution. I grabbed a long bolt and marked the depth required for the dog, plus the head of the bolt. Started with a force and a bit, then finished to depth with a spade bit. From the other side, the diameter of the bolt was drilled. 
The bolt got cut and then cleaned up. Dropped it in till it sat on the shoulder and placed the dog on top. Now I could pop that up and down with ease. I got quite mesmerised and played with it for some time. For the vice, two knobs and a handle were cut. A recess drilled into the knobs. Not having a lathe, a bolt was put through the knobs and they got shaped to the drill press, then assembled. That handle was a bit too long, so I shortened it later. For the finishing, a couple of coats of boil linseed oil were applied, and you can't go without having a matching banister brush. I am super happy with the way my bench looks, but more importantly, how it functions, with heaps of hold down options to choose from. To all those that have subscribed, it is so very much appreciated. So until next time, get out there, give it a crack, and make and create. Thanks for watching.